I'd like to know what some of the things that are that, are that make Michael Jackson angry. I believe in perfection. I, and I, I try to, to create that in everything we do. We never seem to totally get there, but I believe in perfect execution. And when we don't get at least 99.9%, .9 I get really upset. So that gets me upset. Are you going to play any more videos off your History album? Um, there's a lot of more releases from History. We have the Ghosts coming up, which is a big one, um, and Stranger in Moscow, and uh, uh, it's just going to go on and on. I mean, we're 28 million albums right now, other than what the press continue to lie about. The tabloid press, they're terrible. Don't read the tabloids. That's something you can play. The fans, don't read, don't read the stories that aren't true. They, they, they write these stories to, uh, to mislead you and to, you just make them rich. It's not true. Don't read it. It's garbage. It's junk food. Believe what I tell you. Why are you wearing a silk mask in your latest appearances? Because uh, with time, my skin condition has gotten worse. I hate to say it. I have vitiligo, and uh, I'm alert, totally, completely allergic to the sun. I'm not even supposed to be outside, actually. Even if I'm in the shade, the sun rays can destroy my skin. Are there any songs that you, you released that you wish you didn't? Not that I can think of. Uh, some of the Motown, some of the songs, the early ones, I remember getting upset with the songwriters because I wanted to sing them one way and they wanted me to sing it another way. And uh, I would call Barry Gordy, who was the chairman, owner of the company. He would say, look, let Michael do what he wants. I'm sure he's right. So that happened several times. Who's bad? Was the atmosphere between the Motown stars competitive or friendly? It was very friendly. Marvin Gaye used to come to my house at least twice a week to play basketball with my brothers. Stevie Wonder would come by for gatherings and parties, and I would go to the Supreme's house and, you know, I mean, Dinah Ross, where she would invite the other girls over. And it was really... Sincere, sincerely one happy family. We would have a, um, a, ba a baseball team where we played against one another. And I was just really little, but they let me bat. And uh, it was really a happy family. And I miss, I do miss all of them. Even the Temptations, they would come over to my house all the time. Um, are you gonna retape the HBO special you canceled last year? If so, when? Am I gonna what to the HBO special? Retape. Oh. Oh, yes, we're planning on doing that in Africa. In South Africa. Have you ever been scared to go on stage? No, I don't remember ever uh, being afraid to go on stage. I'm more comfortable on stage than giving this interview right now. Are you gonna be doing any concerts here in the United States? Um, I'd like to. We're planning on it next year. So, Mr. Jackson, I just wanted to know, do you ever plan on working with Quincy Jones again? I would love to work with Quincy again. Uh, the doors are always open. Um, we're very friendly with each other. But I, I just like challenging and doing different things and experimenting. And he's a very endearing person, and I do love him very much. If you could spend one day in complete anonymity, where would you go and what would you do? Probably to uh, Neverland or an island isolated somewhere. What would I do? Probably hmm, write music or kind of create some musical or stage play or something, something creative. I never stop working. Michael, did the real Billie Jean know about the song, and if she did, what were her reactions to it? 
Um, there's a girl named Billie Jean. But uh, it's not about that Billie Jean. Billie Jean is kind of anonymous. It represents a, a lot of girls who used to, uh, they used to call them groupies <laughs> in the 60s. They would hang around backstage doors and any band that would come to town, they would have a relationship with. And uh, I think I wrote this out of uh, experience with my brothers when I was little. There were a lot of Billie Jeans out there. Every girl claimed that uh, their son was <laughs> related, you know, to one of my brothers. Which songs of his are uh, autobiographical? Hmm. Stranger in Moscow, Heal the World, We Are the World, I'll Be There. Those type of songs. What inspired the song, Stranger in Moscow? Chattanooga. Uh, Stranger in Moscow. I wrote that in Moscow when the lyrics are totally autobiographical. It's, um, when you hear lines like, here abandoned in my fame, Armageddon of the brain. And at the time, that's uh, on the last tour when we were in Moscow. That's, that's really how I felt. And it, it kind of created itself. It fell into my lap because that's how I was feeling at the time. Just uh, all alone in the hotel and it was raining and, and I just started writing it. <laughs> 